Guess who's back? It's Brittany, bitch. That's right, it's me, Alexia Inman, here to bring you the highs and lows from week five of the NFL. This is your weekly NFL update brought to you by Cal TV Sports. It feels like every week in the NFL there are crazy moments, but I really don't feel like it's too much of an overstatement to say that this week in particular had the most headline-breaking news of any NFL week yet. On Sunday alone, eight games got rescheduled. One Super Bowl team from last year had to bench their starting quarterback. The Saints, all worldwide out, got suspended for hitting a DB in the jaw. And the Browns racked up their best start in 25 years. So... We've got some stuff to talk about, folks. Let's start with the drama-filled Thursday night football game, shall we? The game was the most watched football game on Fox Sports since last year's Super Bowl Sunday, as fans eagerly anticipated the rematch of Nick Foles and Tom Brady. And once again, Nick Foles had Tom Brady questioning who his father is. Like seemingly all NFL games these days, this one also came down to the final minutes, and for once, Tom Brady saw himself on the losing side of a fourth quarter comeback. With 1.13 left and down 21-19, Brady got the ball back and was prepared to lead his team downfield to another fourth quarter victory like he's very accustomed to doing. However, after leading his team downfield, Brady failed to connect with his receivers on third and sixth and fourth and sixth. Wildest of all, after Brady botched the 4th and 6th play, he just stood on the field holding up a 4 on his fingers, pulling a move that J.R. Smith would have been extremely proud to see. After the game, the Bucks coach said that he swears Tom Brady knew that it was 4th down, so either someone's lying or Tom Brady just tried to use the worst cover-up in history for back-to-back -back crap throws. Okay, next up, we have the Monday Night Football game. And holy f the ending of this game was stupid good. Honestly, the ending of almost every single NFL game has been stupid good, and it's really giving the NBA bubble games a run for their money, because those were pretty insane too. You know, I could sit here and talk about the staggering 17-point deficit the Saints had to overcome, or the run-in by Taysom Hill at the end with time expiring, or the Chargers' missed field goal right off the upright, but instead, what I would like to talk about is some really pretty defense from the Saints at the end of the game. Marshawn Lattimore came up with the game-saving tackle on 4th and 7, securing the 30-27 win for the Saints and really showing that the Saints came marching in after that first quarter. Speaking of good defense, this game-saving tackle actually reminded me of another amazing game-saving tackle a couple weeks ago by the Seahawks defense. So I would just like to know what everyone thinks the best one is so far this season. And here they are. Here we go. Dan is going to take it himself and he doesn't get in! And the Seahawks are going to win the game. One down here at the bottom again. Pressure. It's Williams. And I think he's going to be oh, short. short. I wanted to include a clip of the Cowboys defense as well. But unfortunately, it turns out they have been unable to get a team to fourth down all season. So I had to leave them out. And on that note, let's check in and see on how the worst teams in football are doing. Yep, still terrible. After losing 10 to 30 to the Cardinals this week, the Jets are 0 5 for the first time since 1996. They've lost every game by at least 9 points, they've allowed at least 27 points to be scored on them, and they've been outscored 161 to 75. I could continue on with these god awful stats, but I really feel like you guys get the idea from here. The Giants, on the other hand, were so close to victory against the Cowboys they could almost taste it. But they saw two touchdown calls negated, one in each half, on questionable calls. Those points proved to be rather costly, particularly for a team that doesn't seem to know how to win. You know what, at least the Falcons didn't blow another massive lead this week, so I guess some kind of progress is being made with them. They also made some progressive moves by cleaning house on Sunday after losing to the Panthers, firing both the head coach and the general manager. So I suppose it's good that they're making progressive moves for change. I guess. And how about the Browns, who have done a full 180 from being the notorious worst in the league, and they actually might have a playoff chance this year? 
After a 32-23 win over the Colts on Sunday, the Browns are now 4-1 for the first time since 1994. The Browns haven't seen the playoffs in 18 years, but considering they just beat the Colts, who they're going to be vying for a playoff spot with later in the season, this win was huge for them, and we might just see the NFL's longest playoff drought snapped. The teams of Super Bowl last got stunned by their opponents this week, adding to the ever-expanding drama of the NFL. The 49ers are in serious trouble. An embarrassing blowout loss to the Dolphins dropped them to 2-3, and over the next seven weeks, they play a lot of high-caliber teams. Given their many struggles, it's hard to find any obvious wins in there for the Niners unless they improve really rapidly. Meanwhile, Derek Carr and the Las Vegas Raiders decided to exercise their demons in Kansas City, snapping a seven-game losing streak at Arrowhead Stadium. Last week, Derek Carr had the highly intelligent quote saying he was tired of losing. So good for him for deciding not to lose this week. That untouchable chief offense looked a little less intimidating this week as the Raiders worked to put pressure on without a blitz and blanket receivers downfield throughout the game. I don't really expect the Chiefs to make losing a regular thing, but they do have to expect this style of defense to be continually played against them throughout the remainder of the season because it works, so they're gonna need to get better protection from Mahomes, and they're going to need to get receivers open quicker. Russell Wilson proved once again, you cannot give that man any time on the clock if you would like to win a football game against him. On Sunday, Wilson only needed one minute and 42 seconds to connect with DK Metcalf for another game-winning touchdown, putting them at 5-0 for the first time in franchise history. And in case you missed the memo, DK Metcalf has arrived. Still only 22 years old, he has proved time and time again he can step up big, and he did again on Sunday on the game-winning drive with three catches and 60 yards. Wilson's emerging as the MVP frontrunner, but Metcalf is doing a really good job swaying that vote. Seeing injuries in the NFL has become almost routine since week one, but this week we saw a particularly gruesome one with Dak Prescott. While scrambling for a nine-yard game on a super routine play, super routine tackle, he just got his legs caught under him, leading to a compound fracture and a dislocated ankle. He underwent a successful surgery on Sunday night, and he's gonna be out four to six months, putting Andy Dalton, who has not had a winning season since 2015, in as a starting quarterback for the Cowboys now. Prescott has thrown for 450 yards in his previous three games, setting an NFL record, also setting record for the most passing yards through the first four games of the season with 1,690. It's really such a shame to see what was gonna be a standout season cut short. The outpouring of love this man received from the entire world of sports was such a great testament to how respected the body of work he's put into his craft, and there's no doubt in my mind he comes back stronger than ever. But with every dark cloud, there's a silver lining, and that silver lining came in the form of Alex Smith returning to the game of football this weekend. If you don't know the story of Alex Smith, you really should, but... Don't worry, I'll give you the quick and low. In 2018, Smith broke his leg during a game and underwent surgery, a routine surgery, mind you, to fix that broken leg, which ended up leading to a bacterial infection, leading to 17 more surgeries on that leg and even talks of amputation. His career was declared over by many people. His team used their first round pick that season to pick up a new quarterback and the world moved on without Alex Smith. However, before the start of this season, Alex Smith received clearance to play football again and this Sunday, he stepped in for the Washington football team, throwing a football in a game for the first time in 693 days. A shoe in for comeback player of the year and honestly even player of the decade, Alex Smith's tenacity and drive for the game of football is just another reminder of how inspiring and exciting the world of sports is. After the NFL shut the Patriots facility down on Sunday for the third time in 10 days, they decided they had to reshuffle the whole schedule due to more cancellations, and now nine teams' regular season schedules are being affected by it. Hiccups were expected, of course. We're trying to play an organized sporting league in a worldwide pandemic. But honestly, it's kind of proving who can overcome adversity the most, and that's gonna really crown a special champion in February. Okay, and now it's time for week five, fantasy, sleepers, and busts, and hot damn, there were some good ones this week. I'm really excited about this. First up, and I am sure that you saw this one coming, we have Chase Claypool. Claypool, a rookie wide receiver for the Steelers, was a second round pick this year. On Sunday, he had seven catches for 110 yards and three receiving touchdowns, while also running in a fourth touchdown. Claypool came from left field with 42.6 PPR points this week, 
And I have a feeling everybody and their mother is trying to pick this dude up on waivers this week. And I am one of those people. Next up, we have Travis Fulgham, who is a second year wide receiver with the Eagles. So in 2019, he was drafted by the Lions in the sixth round. Then he was waived twice. And now he is kicking ass on the Eagles. On Sunday, Fulgham caught 10 passes for 152 yards and a touchdown. He's been on a real hot streak these last few weeks, scoring the game winner touchdown in week four. And now this week having the most PPR fantasy points in the 1 p.m. slotted games. With Jackson and Jeffrey still hurt in the Eagles lineup and a seemingly good connection formed between Fulgham and Wentz, he's an ideal pickup for week six, especially against the Ravens defense. And he's only rostered in 0.2% of leagues, so like hop on that dish, guys. Sleeper number three is Fitzmagic, baby. Ryan Fitzpatrick has actually been one of the most productive quarterbacks in the NFL in the past year, and you probably had no idea. In the past 17 regular season games, he's had 308.2 fantasy points, which is the sixth most at his position, and 10 games of 20 plus points, so he's doing pretty well. <laughs> With the unpredictability of the constant schedule shuffling due to coronavirus, or maybe you just lost Dak as your quarterback. Um, Fitzpatrick is a really good guy to have in your back pocket. I'm honestly genuinely shocked by our first bust of this week, and it's Lamar Jackson. He struggled for the second week in a row with only 13.5 fantasy points, ranking him 12th out of 16th of all the quarterbacks. Luckily, the superb Ravens defense has been able to pick up for Jackson's lackluster offensive performance, but honestly, the offense looks disjointed and it's created a drop in efficiency for Jackson in general. And I think we all know what this really means. Chase me slowly, throw it on a dime, like I ain't even trying. And that'll do it for week five NFL updates. This has been Alexi Inman with CalTV Sports. Stay tuned next week for another dramatic week in the NFL. It could get even more dramatic, if that's even possible at this point. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, go Bears!